Well, good evening, folks, and welcome again to the Moore Summer 21 Adventures Day 51. Um, <laughs> a busy, beautiful day. Um, I won't say we are totally out of shape because we can function a little bit, okay? But we're not in the best of shape. I will admit that. But today... I want you to know that the Senior Morrises hiked four miles in the mountains, three different waterfalls. So that's four miles total, not one trip, total together, up and down the hills, in the mountains, around, over the rocks and over the branches and the logs and using the roots. And it was fun. Tiring. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, saw three beautiful waterfalls. Saw one uh, covered bridge. We had hoped to see some more, but uh, time got away from us. Uh, like I say, not in the best of shape, but still in shape. So we took a little longer on some of them hikes than uh, probably the more spry person would. And folks, let me tell you, on some of these, there were some little tykes. I mean, we're talking about four and five-year-olds. Just trucking right along, you know. Of course, mom and daddy was helping them a lot, but still, they were, they were going and getting it. They were going to the water, <laughs> and they were having fun, and we did too. Uh, after we finished, uh, we got down to a certain point. Uh, we decided that was enough waterfalls for the day for us. Went over what they call Bear Notch Road over to. Cam Conichi Highway, which is Highway 112, runs east and west into Lincoln, West Virginia, or Lincoln, West Virginia, Lincoln, New Hampshire, and then uh, went on up, hit 93, and went into the Faconian Notch, which I learned yesterday, Notch is the eastern term for pass out west, you know, mountain passes. It's a Faconian Notch and a Faconian uh, uh, Pass, okay, if you will. So it's called Notch here. Um, and it's called the uh, Fracanian because of one, the person that, that found it, but also uh, the style of canyon, cannon that was used uh, in the early wars, uh, like Revolutionary now that, uh, in French Indian. The, um, one of the property owners in the past, in the Notch, had one of those cannons. And whenever... Uh, visiting presidents and dignitaries would visit the area he would fire it off okay it's in that same area that the old man of the mountain was all right um you know and, and new hampshire it's not only you know the live free or die state but it's also known as the granite state. And there is a lot of granite here. Trust me, there is a lot. I've been, I've been seeing it everywhere. Well, the old man was, it, it actually looked like the face of a weathered old man. And it was, you know, created by the wind and the moisture and the temperature change, you know, the freezing and the thawing and all that. And chiseled parts of the granite out and everything. And it made it look like an old man in the mountain. And that's what they call it, old man of the mountain. Well, on Saturday, May 3rd, 2003, the same forces that created the old man destroyed the old man. It, it met its demise by the same things that created it. And uh, it, it, it came crushing right on down. If you've seen pictures of it, the mountain where it set, where, where it was sticking out of, is now flat. And the face come out this way, okay, from the mountain. It came right out from the top of the mountain. It had the face and the nose and chin and everything like that. It all just came crumbling down. The bottom section gave way, and then the second and third, or actually the, they call it the fifth section gave away. Then the fourth and the third gave away. And then the second and the one just came down together. When they inspected the rubble at the bottom of the hill, the mountain, they found that it had been decaying for years because a lot of the granite 
was just like dust particles. And, that, uh, and, and I don't remember, it's, it's on one of the pictures that I took today, um, that the, the geologists back in... 1858 I think it's the, is when they first started saying that, hey, you know, these different sections, these different blocks, if you will, are starting to shift. It's going to come down. It's going to come down. Well, you know, guess what? 2003, it did. All right. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't here to get it. I saw pictures. Um, you know. And they've got a memorial garden now, if you will, of the old man. Okay, and somebody is, is I, I don't remember their name, there's, there's, there was two people, they, they collaborated together on it. But depending on your height, from four foot to five and a half, and then from five foot to six, and then from six to six and a half to, you know, whatever, and then and there's like five or six, I think there's six little... They're like this, okay? Straight and then an L out, okay? And on the end of this is the little silhouette of what the old man looked like. So you stand there at your quarter to your height and you look up this thing and out and you move forward or back and you can see the silhouette of what it would look like if the if the, if the old man was still there. Amazing, you know, and... and the engineering that it took to do that is just phenomenal. So we went there. And you know, so, you know, we did three, you know, we hiked four miles in the mountains. We did three uh, uh, waterfalls. We did a covered bridge. Got a souvenir. Did the Bear Notch Road. Did the Kamkan something another highway, which is 112. Did the Old Man in the Mountain Memorial. And made it back. By seven, by six o'clock, seven o'clock, wasn't it? What time? Six, six o'clock. Then we went and got in the pool. Okay, folks, the pool is not heated. Okay, it's just what I needed. It was a cold pool because my legs were aching and it was just like getting into an ice whirlpool. Mm. Those that know me know me well. Know that my feet swell a lot. Something I inherited from my mother. Okay. I showed my wife. We were at dinner later, earlier this evening, and I said, "Mom, look at my feet," because normally by this time, my feet are swollen right to the edges of the of my shoe and everything. <laughs> shoe was loose. My feet, you know, <laughs> I needed to be in that cold water sooner because <laughs> it uh, it definitely did me some good. But uh, that was our day today. Now tomorrow, um, we're taking a five or five and a half hour uh, railroad trip. Going to cover some of the same area that we covered today, only this time, one, I'm not going to be driving, and two, we're going to be off the highway and behind the scenes, you might say, behind the trees and seeing the land and the different things that we missed because the, the trees were in the way or we didn't know they were there or two, I was driving, I couldn't see them anyway, okay? And we're going to do lunch on the train, so it's, it's like I say, it's a five, five and a half hour trip. Um, and we're looking forward to it, okay, um, where it starts, I, I, again, I was, I, I just got back from the campfire with the owner here, um, where this train starts and ends, this trip, is basically the line, if you will, running east and west of New Hampshire, where below that line is where all the industry is, all the population is above it is the tourist and everything spread out uh, you know we went to dinner Monday night and again tonight at a town that's 20 minutes away okay uh, he was saying earlier you know it takes him 20 minutes to go to Walmart or to Home, Home Depot well when he was living in Connecticut Home Depot was three miles away it would take him 25 minutes Every mile or so, or every two blocks, you'd have a, an intersection with light, and then you had the left turn lanes, and then the proceed lanes, and then the other way would be left turn lanes, and then proceed lanes. So you'd be sitting there at the, at the stoplight for five minutes. So it take you go take you twenty minutes to go three miles. All right. Well, here it takes him twenty minutes to go 
30 miles, okay? <laughs> Whatever. You know, we talked about how close the towns were here in, in the east, even in North Carolina where we live. Towns are close, but out west, you know, you may go 60 miles, you may go 160 miles before you get to the next town. I know uh, my youngest brother-in-law, you know, where he lives, you know, once you leave Vegas, it's a long ways to the next town, especially if you're going north. <laughs> but, hey, we are thoroughly enjoying New Hampshire. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. We haven't been down south. We've stayed up north. So we're just talking from our our limited knowledge of New Hampshire, but we are enjoying it. It's, it's definitely beautiful. And speaking of beautiful, you know, God's Word is beautiful. And today's scripture is no different than any of the others. And it's Romans 3, 23, 24. And it's the scripture that I alluded to, I think it was day before last, about, you know, living carnal is, is death, but living spiritual is life, you know. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. And that goes right in line with that scripture the other night. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Only one person, actually two, were created pure. And that didn't last long. And that was Adam and Eve. Because they committed the first sin. And since then, they were impure. Every human born since has been born into sin. Has been born a sinner. And have all fallen short of the glory. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. That is the redemption. That's where it makes us perfect. And we're not perfect. But through the blood of Christ, God sees perfection. Because he sees the blood that's covering us. He's not seeing us. Do you understand that? Adam and Eve were created and were without sin, but committed sin, and they became imperfect. Everyone since then has been born into sin. But, by the redemption to the blood of Jesus Christ, we have reached the redemption. We have reached the perfection that God sees in us because He's looking at the blood of Christ that's over us. All right? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But through Christ's redemption, we can enjoy the glory of God. You know, that is so magnificent. You know, that alone is enough to shout, praise God. Okay? But by Him allowing me to see this beautiful country of the United States that He has created, and all the magnificent, I mean, you say, well, you know, he didn't create the United States. You know, that was done by the founding fathers and the, 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 the Louisiana Purchase and the Westward Expansion. No, that was the government. The country was already here, and God had already created it. These magnificent mountains, the white mountains here in, North, in, in, in New Hampshire are beautiful. The green mountains that we were at in, in Vermont are beautiful. You know, the mountains there in, in, in northeastern Pennsylvania, where it was Mark and, and his wife. Beautiful. Okay. God created beauty. And God created you. And you are beauty in God's eyes. Okay. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're perfect in God's eyes. So if you don't know Christ, I, I, I strongly urge you and encourage you to develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Not a religious and not a denominational, but a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And let this first come true. Let this first come true. Not make it, let it come true. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. God bless you all. We'll come to you again tomorrow night, hopefully, from right here. Yeah. Until then, be blessed. Good night.